back. I'm John, an old YouTuber. It's 1 p.m. I just talk a lot because uh, the other video, Great Beer Lake, did split. So I did start look. Uh, I looked uh, the Google uh, Google Earth Google Earth map about the Great Beer Lake and Great Slave Lake. And now I like to read about Imperial Oil because close to uh, Yellowknife City you have all this uh, houseboat. And I understand this area, this island, Jolif, Jolif Island, something like that. This company Imperial Oil did own it and then a lot of houseboats did move into there. But that's very close. Just look at the Google Earth. That's just a few hundred meters. You can see it from the city. And they're not paying uh, property taxes. They are not paying property taxes, this houseboat, but they're using uh, the city uh, structure, they're using the libraries and police and hospitals and everything, but they're not paying any money. I think they pay income tax, but they're not paying uh, property tax. But I think if they have an income, they pay. Uh, they pay income tax, but not the property tax of this houseboat. This is how I defined this imperial oil. It was in this uh, yellow life city. Somehow, I don't know, but we can read about that. They maybe mention uh, yellow life. Imperial oil. Imperial oil limited imperial oil dot SVG. Type public traded as TSX. IMO, Amex, IMO, S and P forward slash TSX 60 component, 1, Industry Petroleum, 2, founded 1880 headquarters 505 Quarry Park Boulevard SE Calgary, Alberta Canada Key People Brad Corson Chairman President and CEO, 3, Products Petrochemical, 2, Products Revenue Increase, $26.888 billion CAD, 2015, 2, net income increase, $1.122 billion CAD, 2015, 2, total assets increase, $43.170 billion CAD, 2015, 2, total equity increase, $23.425 billion CAD, 2015, 2, owner ExxonMobil, 69.6%, 2012, 2, 4, number of employees, 5, 263, 2012, 2, website imperialoil.ca, Imperial Oil Limited, French, company Petrolier Imperial Lt, is a Canadian petroleum company. Dot. Two, it is Canada's second biggest integrated oil company. It is majority owned by American oil company ExxonMobil with around 69.6% ownership stake in the company. It is a significant producer of crude oil diluted bitumen and natural gas. Canada's major petroleum refiner a key petrochemical producer and a national marketer with coast to coast supply and retail networks. Dot. 2. It supplies SO brand service stations. 2. 5. It is also known for its holdings in the Alberta oil sands. 6. Imperial owns 25% of Syncrude, which is one of the world's largest oil sands operations. 2. Imperial is also in a joint venture oil sands mining operation with ExxonMobil. Called Kill Oil Sands. 7. Imperial Oil is headquartered in Calgary, Alberta. It was based in Toronto, Ontario, until 2005. 8. Most of Imperial's production is from its vast natural resource holdings in the Alberta oil sands. 9. And the Norman Wells oil field in the Northwest Territories. 10. In 2021, Imperial Oil was ranked no 34 out of 120 oil, gas and mining companies involved in resource extraction north of the Arctic Circle in the Arctic Environmental Responsibility Index, AEI. 11. Contents. 
history founding and early years. Hermann Frost and the Sulphur Dilemma. The 1890s and the Standard Oil Buyout. Later years. Film and television. Corporate governance. Retail. See also. References. External links. History. Founding and early years. In April, 1880, Jacob Lewis Inglehart and 16 prominent oil refiners in London and Petrolier formed Imperial Oil in response to Standard Oil's growing dominance of the oil market. 12. Inglehart was the driving force behind the partnership, hoping to emulate John D. Rockefeller and merge the entire Canadian oil industry into one conglomerate. 13. Although the majority of Ontario's top oil producers agreed to join in the enterprise, notable exceptions were John Henry Fairbank, then Canada's largest oil producer, and James Miller Williams, founder of the Canadian Oil Company. 14. Inglehart and the refiners established Imperial Oil as a joint stock company with a capitalized value of $500,000. 15. In addition to Inglehart, the original shareholders included Frederica Fitzgerald, Isaac and Herman Waterman, William Spencer and his sons, William and Charles, Thomas and Edward Hodgins, John Beery, Joseph Fallows, John Minhinick, William English and John Walker. 16. Together, the shareholders possessed 12 oil refineries and controlled 85% of the refining capacity in Canada. 17. Fitzgerald and Inglehart were the two largest stakeholders in the company and were named the President and Vice President respectively. 18. Imperial Oils Charter noted that its goal was to find, produce, refine and distribute petroleum and its products throughout Canada. 14. Despite a smooth start, Imperial Oil struggled to make a profit and issue dividends in the early 1880s. 19. The discovery of new oil fields in Pennsylvania and New York drove down the price of oil, and the creation of the Standard Oil Trust resulted in an increase of American oil imports into Canada. 19. In a deliberate move to boost kerosene prices, Imperial closed down 10 of the 12 refineries it had acquired through the merger, leaving only the Silver Star refinery in Petrolier and the Victor Works in London. 19. In 1883, the Victor Works was struck by lightning and burned to the ground, and under Inglehart's direction the company concentrated its refining efforts at Petrolier. 14. 20. Herman Frask and the Sulphur Dilemma. In 1884, Imperial Oil purchased the exclusive use of Herman Frask as fractional distillation patent, which was more efficient at separating crude into usable products. 21. Imperial initially offered Frask $10,000 and Imperial Oil stock, but he persuaded the company to offer him a salary that matched Fitzgerald's and A's 8 on the board of directors. 21. Frask had taken the position primarily to supervise the installation of his refining method at the Silver Star Refinery and resigned in February 1885 once the work was complete. 22. Frask then joined John Minhinick in forming a separate venture called the Empire Oil Company. 21. The pair purchased an idle refinery in London and Frask began experimenting on a way to remove the sulfur content in the oil pumped at Lambton County. 21. The high sulfur content in Canadian oil placed it at a disadvantage compared to the oil mined at Pennsylvania due to its distinctive odor when burned. 23. Canadians called the product skunk oil. 23. Between 1885 and 1887, Frask discovered that mixing copper oxide with the oil during the distilling process would remove the sulfur content and odor from the refined product. 24. By this time, Standard Oil had also become interested in the desulfurization process after moving production to oil fields in Ohio that had a similar sulfur content to Lambton County. 25. In 1886. 
Standard Oil persuaded Frask to return to the United States and join their company by offering a salary higher than that of any other scientist in the country, and an exchange of his shares in the Empire Oil Company for an equivalent amount in Standard Oil. 25. After returning to the United States, Frask perfected his desulfurization strategy, and Standard Oil held a monopoly on the process until 1905. 26. The loss of Frask and the desulfurization process was a major blow to the long-term future of Imperial Oil. 25. 27. The 1890s and the Standard Oil buyout. In spite of rising revenue and growth in the 1890s, Imperial Oil faced continuing challenges in its markets most notability from Standard Oil, which operated a series of subsidiary companies across Canada. 28. 29. Although Imperial dominated the Western Canadian market, the company could not establish a strong foothold in the Maritimes or Quebec as Standard supplied these regions through long-term contracts with local companies. 30. While the Conservative Party of Canada's national policy had stopped Standard Oil from fully entering the Canadian market, the economic policy came under attack by Standard Oil lobbyists armed Canadian consumers, who wanted a cheaper and higher quality product. 31. 32. In 1893, Ottawa reduced import duties on refined oil products from 7.2 cents to 6 cents per wine gallon, and in 1896, Wilfrid Laurier's government reduced the tariff again to 5 cents. 31. More importantly, Laurier removed restrictions on tank cars and tank steamers, allowing foreign companies to bulk ship oil into Canada by rail or sea. 31. Before Ottawa lifted the restriction, foreign companies had to repackage their product into oil barrels before entering Canada. 31. This process added roughly 5 cents in shipping and handling charges to each gallon of imported oil. 32. In 1895, Imperial Oil's board of directors began negotiations to sell the company to the Colonial Development Corporation of British Company. 33. After three years, the deal collapsed, and the board of directors instead chose to sell the company to Standard Oil. 33. The agreement specified that Standard Oil would acquire 75% of Imperial Oil's shares. Imperial Oil would acquire all of Standard Oil's Canadian subsidiary companies, Imperial's capitalization would be increased to $1 million, and Imperial shareholders would receive a dividend of $93,000.33. 34. Following the deal, Imperial Oil shut down the Silver Star refinery in Petrolia and moved its refining operations to Sonia, Ontario. 33. Later years, Fifth Avenue Place, former Imperial Oil headquarters in a landmark 1911 antitrust case, the U.S. Supreme Court ordered Standard Oil to break up into 34 separate companies. Ownership of Imperial Oil, as well Standard Oil's other subsidiaries outside the U.S. were all transferred to only one of those 34 successor firms, Jersey Standard, later renamed Exxon. 35. Imperial Oil discovered the Leduc would bend Devonian oil reef in 1947 marking the beginning of the contemporary period in Canadian oil and gas development. 36. Drilling began on the landmark Discovery Well Leduc No. 1 on 20 November, 1946. 36. In 1989, Imperial Oil acquired Texaco's Canadian operations. 37. When Exxon and Mobil merged in 1999 to form ExxonMobil, the combined company continued to maintain Mobil's Canadian operations as a spirit subsidiary, independent of Imperial Oil. 38. Film and Television From the 1934 to 35 season through the 1975 to 76 season, 
Imperial Oil was a sponsor of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation program Hockey Night in Canada for both radio and television broadcasts. 39, 40. SO had three stars on their signs and leveraged it by sponsoring Hockey Night in Canada's three stars of the game. In the same era, the company was also involved in film production frequently providing funding support for the production of independent documentary films. Calgary's Glenbow Museum holds a large collection of Imperial Oil's film inventory. 41. Corporate Governance In January 2020, Brad Corson, president of ExxonMobil Upstream Ventures and a vice president of ExxonMobil, was appointed chief executive of Imperial Oil. His predecessor, Rich Kruger, announced his plans to retire at the end of December, 2019. 3. Besides Brad Corson, other members of the board of directors of Imperial Oil are Christina Hueck, Jack Mintz, David Sutherland, Dave Brownell, David Cornhill and Miranda Hubs. 42. Retail. An ESO-branded service station. With on Thrun convenience store, in Ottawa April 2006 Imperial Oil supplies more than 2,000 service stations as of October 2020, 43, all of which are owned by third parties. It sold its remaining 497 stations in 2016 to retailers such as Alimentation Couch Tard, mostly Ontario and Quebec, 7-Eleven mostly Alberta and British Columbia, Parkland Hanois Group Petrolia and Wilson Fuel Company Limited, 44. In the early 1990 S Imperial Oil had acquired retail operations from Texaco's Canadian unit Texaco Canada Incorporated. With ExxonMobil having majority ownership, Imperial Oil licenses its parent company's brands, including the SO and Mobil names for service stations and the Speedpus electronic payment system. Until 2018, Imperial Oil was a member of the rewards program Aeroplan. On the 13th of March, 2018, Noblaw Companies announced that it had reached a deal for the SO branded stations to join the PC Optimum Rewards program, beginning on June the 1st, 2018. 45. Noblaw Companies had sold its network of 213 gas stations, all of which are attached to its various grocery store locations, to Brookfield Business Partners in 2017. Brookfield entered into an agreement with Imperial Oil to use the mobile brand for these stations. As part of the sale agreement, these stations also continue to participate in PC Optimum. 46. See also. Dartmouth Refinery, Nanticoke Refinery, Strathcona Refinery, Imperial Oil Building, former Toronto Headquarters Building, Nuns Island Gas Station, an SO station designed by Ludwig Mies van der Rohe in 1969, Iaco, Port Moody. References 1S and P. Yes, the video splits in one minute. So that's good, that was one video, Imperial Oil, yes that was last edit few days ago, next is Ice Road, and the video splits in one minute, so we can drink some water, just Yes, let's just uh, continue. It's a very nice day, but I have like ten dollars left of my. I got my pension today, but I have like ten dollars left of my pension money. I have to wait to pay my bills tomorrow, but I did save hundred thirty dollars of my YouTube money. But this video is not about that. I will just continue read this. So that was uh, Imperial on this ice road. Then we need uh, more uh, province and territories of Canada. This one next.